Today, we will find out if Sienna Senior Living is much more than just a high dividend and we will begin right now. As the baby boomers continue to move into retirement, we are seeing a greater demand for the services that seniors require. From healthcare to retirement homes, there will be an ever-expanding need and as investors, that means opportunity. Sienna Senior Living already has fantastic dividends, but could they be holding an even bigger treat bag than that? Before we count those treats, let me know in the comments if you hold any senior related investments. I currently do not hold any, but maybe that will change after this video. As always, I am grateful to see you all here in the home of free financial content on YouTube. If you are new, please subscribe right now so you won't miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. Sienna Senior Living Incorporated was founded all the way back in 1972 in Markham, Ontario, and they were initially called Leisure World Senior Care Corporation, though they did take on the Sienna name in 2015. They provide senior living and long-term care services in Canada. Some of the services that they provide to our seniors include independent support and assisted living, memory care, dementia care services, continence management, and end-of-life care. As of the end of 2021, Sienna Senior Living owned and operated a total of 70 seniors living residences, comprising 27 retirement residences, 35 long-term care residences, and 8 seniors living residences. That's a lot of residences. Residences. I absolutely love what this company is all about, as I have the deepest respect for our seniors, and that alone may be a consideration for some folks looking to invest in SIA. Emotionally, I am all in. But as an investor, I must check those emotions out the door. I am hoping more than anything that the numbers are going to side with our emotions on this one. So, without further ado, let's see what the math has to say about this company. As for the usual, we will begin with the surface data. They have a market cap of $838.34 million, thus making them a small cap stock. Mind you, they are on the higher end of the small, so I give them some credit for that. Their beta comes in at 1.11, which means they are pretty much in line with the market average in terms of volatility, though leaning very slightly towards higher volatility. Their earnings per share come in at 0.35, and their diluted EPS is the same, so dilution is not a factor. As for those earnings, they have declined by 11.9% per year over the last five years, which is absolutely concerning. Their price to earnings ratio comes in at 34.90, which is higher than the North American industry healthcare average of 20.30. That could indicate that they are overvalued, but if you ignore most of the sector and only look at care homes, their average is 35.20, thus making Sienna a wee bit undervalued compared to their immediate peers. They have a price to book ratio of 1.80, so that means they are trading 1.8 times over their book value. This is not that bad, and considering the increased demand in their sector, it does make sense. Of course, we do want to ask, what is a fair price for SIA? According to the folks over at simplywall.st, their discounted cash flow model pegs the fair price of Sienna at $13.34. Of course, compare that to the $11.50 that they are priced at when the video was recorded. I would have to agree with that, especially considering that this is the first year they have shown a profit. Also, many analysts are actually calling for the stock price to rise by roughly 37% over the next year. We already know they have some great dividends. So let's look at their returns, and we will start with, of course, well, those dividends. So they have a dividend yield of 8.22% that comes in the form of a monthly dividend of 7.8 cents per share. This places them within the top 25% of dividend payers in the Canadian market. That is not too shabby. In addition, their dividend has been more than stable for the last 10 years, and they have been increasing it along the way. They are not a dividend aristocrat, though. As great as this dividend seems to be, when we look at their payout ratio, it is a mind-boggling 267.43%. This is not sustainable, and it is by no way, means, shape, or form well covered by their earnings. With growth, they entered 2021 with a share price of $13.12, and they were able to grow it to $15.11 by the year's end. This translates into a return of investment of 15.17%. Adding in the dividends, we have a total return of 23.39%. So far this year, they have fallen in the bear market to $11.50, and that is an ROI of negative 23.89%, which is, well, it's actually fairly typical in the bear market. It is time to look at their debt. 
As of June 2022, their total debt amounted to $984.68 million, while their equity only amounted to $472.56 million. This translates into a debt-to-equity ratio of 208.4%, which is very, very far from ideal. I am not liking this debt situation, and I am willing to bet part of this debt comes from maintaining those higher dividends. I think we do need to look a little deeper at this debt situation. If we look at their short term, their assets come in at $112.7 million compared to $351.5 million in liabilities. This is not a good situation as they are not covering their liabilities on the short term. Switching over to long term, we do have a glimmer of hope as their long term assets amount to $1.64 billion dollars and that will cover their long-term liabilities of 893.77 million. Another piece of good news is that this high debt to equity ratio has dropped from 261.6% down to 208.4% which does show they are moving in the right direction. Will that continue to be the case with rate hikes making debt much more expensive? So what is the verdict? I really love this company despite their fundamentals, but once again, that is an emotional love for this company. The math is not loving Sienna at all, and as an investment, I can't justify it for my portfolio. The dividends are nice, but with such a high payout ratio and that debt to equity ratio of 208%, this company is just too risky in my opinion. Short term, they are a hard stop for me. If you do want those dividends, just be sure to keep a close eye on them. In all likelihood, their dividends will continue to flow as they have in the past, as they will just use more debt to keep that train rolling, opposed to cutting the dividends and using that money to service the debt. Long term, they are moving in the right direction. And if they can get that debt under control, they could be a fantastic opportunity. They are in an industry that the demand will only increase and that will bode well for them. I honestly believe that if I deep dive Sia again in a few years, my verdict may very well be kinder than the one I'm giving here today. I love this company and I hope they keep on track because I would love to hold them once the fundamentals make sense. So is it a trick or a treat? It is a little bit of both, really. The fun does not have to end here because you can always watch my video on CPI that I have linked on the left or you can check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.